Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to episode 13 of Sand Walls, the Armored Heart, aka the Fortress of Toy Hammers, because that is what our dear Mayoris is doing to us. Well, I've been doing a lot of thinking recently, as in the last episode we have lost access to the caverns due to our good friend Sefutha Hollowcrawled being a nice little creature able to spit webs that eyeless serpent here is going to seal off the access to these caverns for good we have two options now we either trap it in some sort of contraption like this one or we wait out until the creature is being defeated by another forgotten beast that comes down here Web spitting monsters are extremely deadly to dwarven kind, but they are not invulnerable, they are not immortal, and they often get aced out by other forgotten beasts. So, since this is all going to block us for a pretty long time, I went upstairs and I did some plans. So, the castle up here is now, well, I got some ideas how I'm worried to do it. I will build this castle upwards by small, by making it sort of pyramidical, or well, it's not the right term, but uh, I'll just draw the walls and I'm pretty sure you'll get the idea. So we're going to make this entire blueprint, we're copying it one grid narrower, just like that. And that will give us a nice castle-like construction. And most importantly, this will also give us a lot of room to work with upstairs. As we have a lot of building space inside. This is a fairly large blueprint. And this allows us to make a part of the city go upstairs. And I really like the idea of that. This is exactly what I'm hoping for. And we are going to relocate a portion of the city's infrastructure, therefore also upstairs. So this is going to be a really, really huge task though, as we now not only need to bring up the walls, of course, we also need to bring up the lid. And this time I'm not going to use mudstone again, because I'm really bothered by having the same floor again and again, because this makes it, for me personally, super hard to perceive on which level I am. I like to alternate between one color and another, so brown, gray, brown, gray, just like that. And this way you are not being confused about whether you are seeing open space or not. There we go. So, well, this will keep the fort busy for quite a time. But this level here is going to be really important as I figured this fort needs a proper range defense. We've been talking about that in the comment section previously. And I figured that level 2 will be made pretty much for the Mark's Dwarfs. Let's put it down like that. This is going to be the territory where these guys will do their thing. And therefore, I want to bring up a nifty little construction that I made up here. So let's make sure we have the stairwells that we require. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So, let's see how things will go. Alrighty. The amount of claystone that we got right now will be certainly not enough, but to my big relief, Godin's newest decree is luckily not for new toy hammers <clears throat> okay so claystone 
we're going to need some of that. And we already started quarrying it a while ago. And where was that? Is this the wrong region? I think it is the wrong region. Yeah, here. And so here we don't have any of it. If we go upstairs, there's still plenty of it. And I think if we just go right next to that, we can clearly just see what we need. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to smash a hole into the ground here. To get a little bit more intel about what's around here. And we're going to close that off immediately after. But as you see here, we don't know much about uh, what's going on there. We're punching a hole into the ground. Let's change that. So for one, we don't now know that uh, there's nothing we need to be worried about. And also, we can't just go downstairs without having to worry about it. Now we just make, take a boulder that is nearby. And just like that, we got the issue resolved. Bam. And now we can just uh, go and dig downstairs here. Just like that. All right. So the amount of claystone, that'll take a while. Pretty sure that we will take a fair amount of time to carve that out. So we're going to get ourselves busy with something else. And that is bringing up the Mark's Dwarf squad. As you see, we really need that. So let's create a new squad first. This will be our Dwarf of the day as we get ourselves a new fresh squad together. The creations of spreading. Well, they're spreading bolts all over the place, I guess. So, well, why? Ah, whatever. Dwarven names. So, Dastot or Uvash? Well, let's see which peasants we still have apart from that. Yeah, let's take Uvash. Uvash, my friend, you are your, our new captain of the archer squad. So who are you? Tell me your story. Uvash figure clasp. He's emotionally obsessive forming lifelong attachments even if they aren't reciprocated. So you're kind of a stalker, eh? Ugh. <laughs> He's somewhat fearful in the face of imminent danger, that's why you are a Marks Dwarf, and he often feels discouraged after being caught in the rain in 102. Okay. Rain. Big enemy of Dwarven kind. He occasionally overindulges, and he is troubled by this because he values self-control. He finds helping others emotionally rewarding. He's quick to form negative views about things, and he doesn't seek out excitement. He speaks in a monotone in a monotone when he is annoyed. He sticks out his tongue when he's thinking hard. He cracks his knuckles when he's bored. All right. Oh, Snatchers. Hello, fools. How are you? Meet my friends and their hammers and other sharp items. Off they go! Let's see. There's one quick battle. But I th think we, uh, we scared them off. Let's see, is there still Goblin on the map? Yeah, one of them. Still hoping for an oh, Ancha. Nako Bulb Monster. Alright. Let's witness the last moments of Nako Bulb Monster before he gets overrun by a truck of uh, angry dwarfs. Hoot hoot. That's that. Alright, so yeah, Snatchers. They're basically just a little bit of uh, martial prowess training for our men. So, I think I forgot to um, give Uvash his asterisks. I'm very sorry, Uvash. So, henceforth, we will no longer introduce new dwarfs to the roster of protagonists, as the roster is full for now. But a very cool idea that has been uh, made by the comment section 
was that we are going to feature now one of these dwarves each episode again and uh, check back what has happened in their life so we can check if they have changed or, or well you see just just say hi to our old friends and i really like that idea so we're sticking with it now what i really really want to have for this fort is a inner barracks or a circular ring of defense that allows me to lock the Marks Dwarves in. Oh, wait a sec, this is looking horrible. There we go. I think this is better. Yeah. Which will lock the Marks Dwarves inside of the barracks where they're training. So basically, I will make fortifications all over the place. And this circular level here will be all for the Marx Dwarfs. This will be entirely the creations of Spreading's place. I don't know if I can make all their living stuff happen in one level. You see, ideally, I would like to have a place for sleep to sleep for them, some place to eat, some place to socialize, maybe a tavern where everybody can visit. But when there is combat, we're going to put gray, uh, hatch covers on top of these babies here and we're just going to lock them so the Mark's Dwarf can resist his most lethal urge and that's the one to just pack his crossbow and smack it into the enemy with full force. Which is not the way how you use a crossbow jurist, but we constantly need to remind our brave fools about that because otherwise they will just do exactly that. It's a shame. It's a um, long-term bug of the Marx Dwarfs AI, because you cannot tell me that this is uh, working as intended at that end. But, well, it is what it is. If everything works out as I want it to, the next level of the fort will then be reserved for the citizens yet again. So we're going to have this level here for mostly for the Marx Dwarfs. Don't know what we're going to use the center region for see about that and then upstairs this will be more city more citadel and uh, probably take that one or two levels and then we're going to finish it off off with a uh, proper roof which keeps the fortress expandable which is something i really like and at the same time it looks darn badass so we also need to destroy these because I want to floor the entire place here and we just cannot make that with the traps on top besides that we don't need these traps right now too badly as we're just going to reconstruct these traps for the time being here in the entrance All right, so cage traps are the most cheesy thing in Dwarf Fortress, and I think in the next series after this one, I might be even even refraining my uh, restraining myself from using these totally, as they are just too strong. As you can see here, we still there there was nothing that this giantess here could have done against running into a cage trap, and while this is all in all pretty harmless. You see, the giant would have been destroyed by our people anyways. The big problem behind that is just, you got to look at it like this. This works even against dragons. I mean, it doesn't work against forgotten beasts and um, the real high-end enemies. Yeah, okay. But uh, dragons? I don't feel like it is okay to cripple dragons like that. So they just are victim to a simple cage trap like that. So cage traps trivialize the game tremendously. And if you feel like you're bored with your Dwarf Fortress experience, yeah, turn off your cage traps and see what you, how you feel about that. So finally, our good farm plots are done. So the first one, entirely plump helmets. 
the second one entirely plump helmets we need those as you see here our drink number is dwindling even though we are not even at the full capacity of dwarves here so next plot sweet parts whenever possible with a tint of pigtail and the next one again sweet pot in this season but double pigtail there we go so do i have process plant bag yes i do so we can also go for a couple of quarry bushes they grow most time of the year a slow mixture into that and here we go for another sweet pod some cave wheat and let's go for some more sweet pod here we do a mixed field and i think i'll leave a last one open so look at that there's all people that say there were old people. And the, the Forgotten Beast is unscathed after having killed. Let's see. Nine of these. They didn't even manage to put a scratch into the monster. That is why we don't go anywhere close to that anymore. Because it's just like asking to get killed, sadly. It is what it is. Okay. Our claystone pits are now expanded. Which is something I really do like. As you see there, we have now a clear limit where we can go and where we can't go. And there is just way more claystone now to be claimed. Enough for the entire fort. I just wanted to make sure that we don't suddenly run into a shortage that is dangerous something can crawl into the ford just like that Ugh. you see that is why i keep close tabs on all these things whenever i can spend some time these are things where something like this wonderful little forgotten beast could make its way into our ford just hasn't found it yet. That's where we got lucky. Oof. That's scary. It's always super scary for me to see stuff like that. Anyways. We are doing fine. The new farming plots. Well, I think we need to erase the old ones now. This will free up a lot of... Uh, Lump Helmet spawn, and I think, yeah, this stockpile here shall be deleted and shall be replaced with a spot right here. There we go. Since I'm not quite sure anymore, I'm going to attach it to this... Uh, storage stockpile here because I don't know but I think ah, I did exclude the seeds okay former me was smart so our gatherers are here doing their thing and that will give us a nice amount of plant to work with in the time until our new agricultural project will kick into motion it's okay. We're gonna deal with that. Alright, so let's get the whole barracks thing going. So we're going to put up a couple of archery targets here. That should be totally enough for the entire squad to train. We're going to make ourselves bone crossbows. As these are made from leftovers, they hit the same as a regular one. Because, you know, the material used on your crossbow does influence, as far as I know, not the um, oomph of the projectile. It just does influence how much damage it does if you thwack the enemy with it. 
be directly using it as a blunt weapon and how heavy it is while you're carrying it. But, uh, fill in my blanks if you please. Well, let's see about that. We struck fire upon, all right. I just keep close taps on these guys to make sure that they don't accidentally open up a wall into the next layer of the caverns and it stays unspotted. This is uh, something we, we cannot have, you know. And ammo-wise, we can, I, I think we can and will make crossbow bolts out of uh, copper or silver. We got plenty of these metals available and I feel like it, this is going to be really amazing. In that regard, I also felt like we're going to make ourselves a nice subterrain workshop here. Just like there, let's make this on F5. So we're going to make uh, this our magma reservoir. This is the place where we will build our workshops on. So there goes that. And we're gonna be digging it out like that. Probably. We'll we'll see if the warm stone warnings will will get the best of us. We'll see about that. Alright, somebody has named one of his weapons. I always uh, keep being afraid about these pop-ups they feel like. A forgotten beast might be swooping into my fort. All right, so this will be where we do our magma workshop in the future. I'm still cheesing around with my cage traps, but I'm not cheesing around with magma minecarts anymore. I like it about this game that you can make it yourself progressively harder to do things. Speaking about making things harder, we do need more clothes as it is, becomes harder and harder for our one clothing workshop to keep up with the production there. We also need one, oh, well, is that a leather workshop? Yeah, good, we have that. And we need a bowyer, that's what we need. So I don't think we have one yet. I don't think I have room here for a bowyer. So we're going to dislodge the jeweler's workshop. It never meant to be up here anyways. All right, that'll do the trick. And here goes the boyer instead. All right, another thing that crossed my mind was I, I want to have a few more stoneworks down there as well. We currently have five stoneworkers which is, in all fairness, not enough. We do not get all the things done that's enough. Especially the claystone blocks, we constantly wait on these, and it bothers me. So we're going to change that by increasing the amount of workshops in a grand total. So we're going to make ourselves a staircase thing out of that sometimes it is a little bit difficult but we get in there so there we go just to keep things interconnected it's always nice to have these little stairwells in between that keep your dwarves mobile all right And that'll do the trick. So I want to make these out of Gabbro. As this is a very standard and non-demanding stone. Okay. So amping up the total number of stoneworks to 10. That should do the trick. Alright, because currently I see this uh, roof structure being completed way too slow, but it is uh, nothing new. 
see that there is just a problem with this uh, processing. Tell you what, we're going to employ a second planter, as I feel like my dude here is uh, really not getting behind his tasks anymore. All right, we got animals again that need to be put on the on the pasture. New people keep bringing new animals. New animals are forgotten. I'm very sorry about that. Oh, look, we have now a hematite clothier's workshop. Well, I'll keep it for now there. If I ever want to make something else out of that hematite block, I'll, I know where I can find it. Okay, let's check back with those stone workers shops. Yeah, you see, they're being uh, immediately used for the reduction of playstone blocks, just like I was hoping for. All right, so down here, it starts wonderful. So my idea is quite simple. We're going to go for the entire you will needing industries down here. Simple as that. We are not going to torture ourselves anymore with that kind of uh, problematic there. We're just going to slap up a ginormous uh, magma reservoir here. Okay. A couple of gemstones popped up. Let's not say no to these. Oh dear, it's warm stone spotted. So we we better be careful about that. I do still see a certain chance of us uh, being uh, surrounded by magma still. Just realized that I need to keep an entry point Because I want to shut off this uh, um, the entrance to this place with a uh, with a bridge. I don't want anything that falls into the magma sea to be able to perpetrate the fortress this way. Because you got to see it like that. All the workshops that we're going to put downstairs here will have a hole that connects them to this uh, magma reservoir. If any monster cre crawls in there, it's going to pop out the magma reservoir just like that. And this is something that I want to avoid. Hey, look at that. We managed to chuck out some Zircon. I didn't expect that to happen. All right, so bridge goes here. Oh, wait a sec. We're not going to make any material bridge. As here, when we're working with magma, I like to use specifics. So we're going to work with Gabbro, as Gabbro is a magma safe rock. I hope I have rock. I, I hope I have hatch covers. Yeah, I have them on my standard tab. Excellent. So we're going to make a switch for that. And then we're going to link it up, and just like that, our magma workshop is done. That's a quick one, isn't it? But I think I'm going to christen this one in the next episode, as we are already pretty close to this episode's end. We had a good run on the preparations. I like that. Let's connect that. Shale. Why do I have shale mechanisms? And is shale a magma safe stone? No, it ain't. I mean, it doesn't really matter. In all honesty, I don't care. Oh, I do care. As, um... I just realized that, uh... 
this won't work then. Okay, so a trick that we are going to use there is we're just going to link it to a different lever. And we're going now. Mechanisms. So shale mechanisms are now forbidden. Just like that. We got that issue out of town. Now we're going to link the bridge another time to a proper mechanism. And then the magma will burn away this uh, shale mechanism, which is not interacting um, anymore. So this lever will have no function whatsoever. And this one will be the... This bridge will then be connected via the surviving gap row lever, so to speak, and... We struck native platinum? Wow, this is awesome. Platinum, my men. This is one of the most valuable materials and heaviest metals known to dwarven kind. So I think this is the most excellent outro that one could wish for. So hooray, we struck platinum. Thanks for being around. Comments go down below, a thumbs up would be wildly appreciated, so does a subscription. And check out the description box, this is full of links, which lead you to the entire playlist. Discord, Twitch, where I stream on the weekends, and also there is a channel membership system now on YouTube, where you can just toss in as much as you want and get a preview right for all the things that I have already scheduled, you know if you like to but uh i'll be never withholding any of the content here free content all the way that's my motto so you can just get yourself a little bit earlier on that otherwise there's patreon paypal and buy me a coffee and i want to say thanks to all of you who are supporting the channel and thanks especially to you yes you watching this video right now deeply appreciate having you folks watching these videos until the very end. See you all in the next one. And I think this castle, she's looking gorgeous, isn't she? We'll see you there. Bye-bye.